So the upgraded version of the Chewy Highbook is out and it's called the Chewy Highbook Pro. So what has changed in the model, we now have this new screen on there that is fully laminated. It has a 2560 by 1600 resolution and it is very nice. It's very bright, it gets up to 396 nits of brightness and it dulls down to about 26. And it's got an Atom X5 Z8300, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabyte eMMC drive. That's Windows and Android. So spec-wise, hasn't changed too much, but the battery has also increased from 6,800 milliamp hours now to 8,000 milliamp hours. So this review is going to be broken down into sections. You'll see right now some time codes. So feel free to skip ahead to parts that interest you the most. For example, if you want to only see the Android portion, then feel free to skip ahead to that. So on the bottom of the device, you'll find a five pogo pin and there are two support slots there for the keyboard, which I'll show you in a second. We have a Windows home key and right at the top there, a front two megapixel camera. On the right side, a speaker. And along the top, the volume up and down and power on button. And on the left side, we have a micro SD card slot. Now this can take 128 gigabyte SSDs, micro SD, sorry, without any problems. We have a Type-C port, USB 2 port, microphone, HDMI out, and 3.5mm headphone jack. Now that headphone jack does support microphones, but they only seem to work in Windows for some reason. In Android, I could get not get my headset microphone to work at all. And along the back is made out of an alloy that is finished with a matte paint job, and it is very nice to the touch. It feels good. There's a little tiny bit of flex in there, but the build quality overall is quite good and you will find a top rear facing two megapixel camera. It's well put together, there's no flex or creaks in the design, and I find for the price range here, it looks really good, and because it has that fully laminated display, it has a more premium look and feel to it. Now the keyboard, which is an optional accessory that you can buy for it, is a transformer style, and it just clips in like so with the magnets, and allows you to close it right down, and use it like a small, little notebook, 10.1 inch notebook. You can see left and right, it does have USB 2 ports, rubber feet here on the top to stop the keyboard from scratching the screen protector. And for a smaller 10.1 inch keyboard, I find the typing experience is good. There's a good amount of travel on the keys. They are smaller because of the size constraints here, as well as the touchpad. Now the touchpad does support gestures. Unfortunately, they cannot be disabled, so I do find them to be quite annoying at times. And I often find myself just hitting function and F11 to completely disable that trackpad. Now it is small. I will say it is usable at best. Because of its size, it does have hardware left and right mouse buttons. But it is tiny, so there's only a limited use key you can use with it. But if I didn't have a mouse, I can still get away with using it at least. And overall, the build quality is quite good. The top is a metal finish. The rear of it, I will show you. We have a matte rubberized paint job and four rubber feet to hold it firmly on tables. And this is the maximum angle the screen will recline, which isn't the best, isn't the greatest, but it is a design choice or limitation, I should say, they've had to go with. Otherwise, they'd have to make the keyboard a lot heavier. And pushing back on there, using it as a touch screen, there's a little bit of wobble there when touching it, but it's not too bad. And just to warn you that the Highbook, the first model's keyboard, is not compatible because these stays, these supports, are actually longer on the Highbook and shorter on the Highbook Pro. This is the Highbook keyboard, and what I had to do was actually get a hacksaw and cut the tops off in order to make it fit. Now the 2560 by 1600 screen has a very nice look about it because it's fully laminated. It's extremely sharp with 299 PPI, very good blacks, nice and bright, gets up to almost 400 nits of brightness. It dims down to around about 20 which is quite dim, but I'd still like to see it a little bit dimmer. But it's a very premium screen, and I would go as far as to say the best screen I have seen in a Chinese tablet to date. And mainly because, too, it's fully laminated, so you don't get those reflections. Even when the tablet is powered off, it still looks nicer because it doesn't show the grayness of the screen below it. It looks very dark and black and, and gives the tablet a premium feel when you're holding it as well. Now, the only real side effect I have noticed from the screen is, well, like all fully laminated displays, at certain points of it, if you do apply pressure, you will see ripple effects. This even happened with my Surface Pro 4. 
viewing angles are also excellent. One of the downsides to this tablet, about the only real major thing that I have discovered is, well, first off, the design does not include any full USB ports unless you use the keyboard dock here that I have in the background. That's the only time you're going to get a USB 2 full-size port. So will these ports power an external hard drive? Well, yes, they will, but there's a slight issue. Now, a white light means USB 2, a blue light means USB 3. Unfortunately, the Type-C port is only USB Type 2, I mean, sorry, USB 2 spec. So when you first power on the tablet, you'll be greeted with the dual boot menu. Here you can select either Android or Windows straight away. So now this section of the review will cover the Android ROM and gaming performance as well as benchmarks. So the ROM Chewy have used is very stock. It is in fact as stock as you can get. It has no bloatware on it. It just comes with the essential kind of applications like voice recorder, search, a few little Google things on there, but Play Store is on there. That's the most important. And it is running Android 5.1. Now the performance of the ROM is actually surprisingly good. Now I thought that that huge resolution would have a very detrimental effect on the performance, but it doesn't. It's actually quite snappy, quite quick. And I did take a few benchmarks here and I'll show you the results. I'll just quickly cover those. So here's the battery life I'll start out with. So this is the uh, work performance score that it got using PC Mark. Now that's not a bad score at all, five hours, almost 40 minutes, considering the screen resolution, I think. Now that was configured to 200 nits of brightness, so you can actually lower the brightness and probably get a lot longer than that. And there's a screen on details, so five hours, 15, 16 minutes. And here is the Geekbench 3 score and 2 2 score. Anything over around 60,000 is the norm for this chipset. Slingshot, Ice Storm, Ice Storm Extreme score. And that was all I run, ran there with benchmarks. And the browser performance is good. I'll just quickly load up techtalents.com and show you. And wireless performance I found has been fine getting normal kind of speeds that I would out of these tablets. The range seems okay. It seems a little bit less than other designs like the Cube iWork Ultimate, which has plastic around where the antennas are. This has the all alloy body on it. So it does feel like range could be slightly affected by that. But I haven't had any problems downstairs in that. It just, I do feel that it probably won't be as good as some other models. And the performance of that, that seems good. I'll just go to... Oh, it's a little bit choppy there, but this is quite an image heavy website. So just load in a clip with YouTube, see how that performs. There's a clip of some gaming on this model. So the Chewy Highbook Pro has a 2500 on a screen for such a high resolution. So the first game I'm going to test here, this is Dungeon Hunter 5. Now I'm going to use a Bluetooth controller for games that allow me... So that's working fine. And just add that because of the screen resolution, that the text looks very sharp, very nice. So if you're looking at PDFs and eBooks and things like that, that will also make the screen really shine and the text very readable due to the sharpness of the screen. Now RAM use, you normally have around 3.2 gigabytes of RAM free. So there's plenty there for multitasking. Now, what about gaming? You can see I have a few games here installed. I did actually put up a gaming video, the one I just showed you that clip of in the YouTube, and it depends on the game. So certain games will actually run in the native screen resolution. So it's a very high resolution, very demanding for the Intel graphics that it has. So games like Mortal Kombat X, I will just quickly show you that it runs quite slow due to the high resolution, but other games like Real Racing, which upscale, will be quite fast and quick, just like any other Android device. You can see what I mean, Mortal Kombat X is just running very slow here. It's like a slideshow basically. I estimate around 10 or 15 frames per second only. And games like Real Racing here you'll see are very playable because they just upscale. Very good frame rates, it's nice and smooth. There's a few little tiny little stutters there, but 
I would definitely call this one playable. And other titles here that you can see, they're in my other video that I did of gaming. Model, sorry, Modern Combat 5 and Dungeon Hunter 5. They're very playable as well. So it's all going to be dependent on what kind of game it is. So super demanding games will be stuttery, will lag because of that high resolution screen. So that completes the Android portion of the review. I will now switch over to Windows and cover the Windows part. Now here in Windows I found that the performance seems to be just like any other Atom Z8300. It doesn't seem to run any slower. The touch accuracy and responsiveness of the screen I'm finding to be very good. It's fine. Uh, the typical Windows, sometimes you have a little bit more trouble minimizing, say Windows for example. It's not so touch optimized like Android as I've found. So first boot when you do get it you have uh, 30 gigabytes free on Windows and sorry in Android I think you get around I think it's around nine gigabytes, could actually be a little bit more than that, but enough space at least to install some large games on Android there. And I'll just quickly show you. So wireless is real tech and the disk drive it has on there is a Toshiba. So that is good. And we can see here that it's got the full four gigabytes. Windows activation, no problems whatsoever with any of that. That days have gone when we had problems with licensing on most devices, literally 95%, you'll never have any problems with that. So you see along here, the Realtek, and then the disk drive is a Toshiba. See this, for example, touching on this is a little bit harder there, but of course I have a camera behind me and the angle I'm looking at it too isn't exactly helping me. So there we go, see Realtek, those information there from the device manual are the only stuff there that's really interesting. So I will get straight to the point here with some of the benchmarks that I ran. So here's a look at the internal storage. So internal storage speeds, the reads are good, but the writes are disappointing. 35 write, that's not really that great for a Toshiba EMMC. It's a little slow there, but I'm not really noticing it. The read speed's good, so everything seems to be fine. The performance, it seems just like any other tablet. It seems just like the Chewy High book I had, and even like the HI, HI12 that I also have. So temperatures as well. I've been monitoring those quite closely. And this is as high as it gets, so 73. It does get quite warm around this upper area here, but it's not getting any thermal throttling. And overall, they're really good. Now that was 43 minutes of nonstop benchmarks. As you'll see there from the average temperatures, they are quite warm there, but it normally hovers around, when you're not benchmarking doing things, sits around the lower 50s and gets up to around 60, 70, 73 here when gaming. Now to quickly run through the benchmarks I have tested, so CloudGate 1.1 actually got surprisingly higher than it did in Android, about 200 points more there, and the iStorm Extreme score got a little less. Now most other devices get around this score around about 10,000, 9,000, so it's a little on the low side, and so is the iStorm Unlimited score, again a little on the lower side there, not too sure why that is. And my speed test here that I just ran before so it's getting a very similar speed to my desktop the upload speed is very good the download speed my desktop got 35 megabits per second this got 28 i'm not too sure why it's a little bit slower there so i will just quickly load up techtablets.com and use the keyboard just to show you what the typing is like on that it's as responsive and good as any other atom tablet haven't had any problems. Edge performance is good. And that is a lot more fluid than the browser was in Android. And things tend to load up really quick. I haven't actually visited the website before, so that wasn't too bad at all. And I test another YouTube clip. Now 4K in YouTube will work, but in Chrome it is extremely slow and choppy you get a missed frame. So it's just going to put this right up now to 4K. And that shouldn't be a problem because this is a 4K clip that I recorded. And it's just going to take a little while there. There we go. That's now running in 4K. And just full screen it. See if you can get the old stats. Okay, so two drop frames. Let's have a look and see if it's any good. 
So that's working fine 4K streaming from YouTube. And before I get on to some gaming tests with Windows Store Game and a few other titles, just wanted to cover quickly Battery Life. Okay, so Battery Life isn't too bad. It seems to be better than Android for some reason. Android seems to be a little bit more heavier on the CPU or something, or maybe to do with drivers and Windows. But I found that you can get around six to six and a half hours with the brightness set to 25%. Now, 25% isn't as dull as it would be on some tablets. It's not a bad kind of brightness there. Now, if you increase that brightness, then you're going to get lower times, of course. It depends what you're doing. But what I was doing here was I was using Edge. I was watching some YouTube, also watching a couple of clips. I watched a clip of uh, Mr. Robot, for example, and that was about 50 minutes and used up about 13% battery life, if I remember correctly. So the battery life doesn't seem that bad for what it is, considering the screen size, the battery capacity. Now, of course, you could also go and put flight mode on. You could turn the brightness to 0%. You could try and squeeze every single last bit out of that battery, and you could maybe just watching videos get even over seven hours, I think. Oh, and for those wanting to know the RAM usage, you see at the moment, nothing's really running. I have uh, about 41% there used with the memory. And overall, the performance of Windows is reasonably quick and snappy. Opening things up works quite fine. Going to the menus, no real differences to other Atom Z8300 tablets. Full volume. So it sounds coming out of the both left and right speakers. It sounds quite tinny, but it's a little bit louder. The loudness I think is okay. Now Android does output slightly more loudness and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack sounds really, really good. It's actually one of the best I've heard on an Atom tablet. Very clean audio, no static, no hiss, nice and loud and very clear sound. So I'm just gonna have a quick look now at a Windows Store game because Windows Store games run in this native screen resolution. So it'll be interesting to see if they're going to be playable or not. This one is Sniper Fury. All right, I don't expect this to be very playable. We'll see what happens. Okay, that's reasonably choppy there. Let's have a look at what the zoom's like. So it's quite slow. Window games there, you definitely want to lower your desktop resolution first before launching any of the Windows Store games. Next up is League of Legends, popular online game. So myself and three other bots in Summoner's Rift. Alright, so these are the settings I'm going to use. It's 1024 by 768 and very low settings. At the moment, 46 frames per second. Now you're probably thinking, why those settings? Well, just to try and keep that frame rate as high as possible. That's what we want, ideally, don't we? So, it's the golden rule with Atoms. So you just got to lower the resolution, lower the settings. Okay, I decided to go to 1280 by 800 resolution. At least that scales to the screen correctly. And at the moment, it's around 46 frames per second. Moving around the map, that is fast and fluid. This title is going to be playable, I can safely say. So Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now this is the Dust 2 map and I have the settings set to 1024 by 768. I do believe that 1280 by 800 will just be too demanding for this Atom chipset. And I have all the settings on the lowest. So at the moment it's hovering around 20 frames per second. I'm horrible at this game. Now you could lower the resolution down to 800 times 600, which would give a boost in frames per second. I'll just check that out now. So these are the settings I'll just test now. So 800 times 600 is just floating around 30 frames per second, just above that. Seems a bit better, a bit smoother.
So to recap, the screen looks very nice. I mean, it's premium. It is what makes this tablet. It's just so nice having a fully laminated panel in this price range. At the time of this review, this was 199 US and the build of it is good. Nice metal build. Okay, the downsides are that yes, there's no full USB ports on this, which is really unfortunate to see. And that Type-C port is only working at USB 2 speeds. I would really have liked to have USB 3 speeds on that. The keyboard as well is good to type on. And the trackpad, the touchpad there is just too small and a little bit awkward to use. Gestures make it awful in window, Windows there. And Android, the Android ROM is very light. It's quite fast, but gaming depends on the game. You're going to have to be a little bit careful there. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you back in the channel soon. And if you did like this review, why not think about subscribing for more just like it.